Amen. God bless you guys. As you are seated, say hi to a couple of people. At home, online, why don't you just drop a hello into the comment box? It's so good to be with you today, and I want to extend the, the welcome that Debo gave to us. If you were visiting us today, we are thrilled that you were with us. If you were watching us online for the first time, again, it is great that you were with us, and we pray that you'll be blessed as we spend time together. Well, today, we are concluding our talks on the Holy Spirit. Over the past few weeks, as we have been looking at the Holy Spirit between the visiting guests that we have had, we've been considering the promise of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. We've looked at the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And Graham encouraged us, didn't he, that first of all, we need to put on that love. And then we looked at the gifts of the Holy Spirit with Jess last week. And as we conclude today, after all these things that we have looked at, I want to encourage us to partner with the Holy Spirit. Let's partner with the Holy Spirit. Over 10 years ago, I took on the challenge of competing in a triathlon. Now, when I say I competed, I'm exaggerating it a bit. But uh, the church we were attending at the time, they were needing to raise funds for a new church centre. And this was my way of trying to bring in some of the finance for the church building fund. Brecon, the location where we were going to church, they held an annual triathlon event. And I thought to myself, this is the moment, PLJ. Come on, you can do this. My running was okay. I'm a bit of a plodder, all right? My cycling was fine. I had just got rid of my stabilizers. But <laughs> the, the challenge for me was my swimming because I swim like a brick. I am terrible when it comes to swimming. But I was thankful that I got to train with, with a great guy called Rob Powell. Rob Powell was and is a fantastic athlete. He was one of these guys that could do a triathlon before breakfast. He was amazing. Rob would cycle 60 miles on a Sunday morning, and he would still get to church on time. He was incredible. And uh, if I recall, Rob's desire was to get into the Great Britain triathlon team. My desire was simply to finish the race. And uh, in the build-up to the event, I would go swimming Monday to Friday, get up at 6.30 every morning and try to swim. And then I would go out running and cycling with Rob once or twice a week. Rob was a doctor, a GP, so how he fitted this into his schedule, I do not know. But, you know, this guy was so gracious to me when we would train. I must have been slowing him up big time. But every time I fell off my bike, he would wait patiently for me to get back on, and we would get going. In order to cycle quickly, I kind of clipped my shoes into my bike, but I wasn't mastering that part where you stop at the traffic lights and then click them, and I would regularly fall off. But this guy was amazing, and it was through this partnership that I had with Rob that I was able to complete this triathlon. And for us, as we receive the promise, as we embrace the person of the Holy Spirit, as we step out in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, as we use our God-given giftings that God has blessed us with, as we move out in him, as we become all that he wants us to be and receive, that is the partnership that God wants us to have today with him through the Holy Spirit. 
as I've prayed and as I've thought about this message this week, there is just one simple verse that has kept coming into my heart and we find it in Galatians 5.25. And Paul is encouraging the, the Galatian Christians and he says this, we can say it together, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. In other words, Paul is saying to his friends, let's partner with the Holy Spirit. Let's partner with the Holy Spirit. This sentence is part of a bigger conversation that Paul is having with the Galatian Christians. Paul begins this verse with a statement of truth. Paul is saying to us, we live by the Spirit. People of God, I want to remind you of that. We live by the Spirit. So let's keep in step with the Spirit. As Christians, as we are spiritually alive, and as we move forward, we do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. I need to ask you today, how is that partnership going? How are you and the Holy Spirit today? Another question I need to ask us here in the house and at home who are we actually partnering with are we partnering with people that are taking us forward or taking us back the Holy Spirit giving life this may be new to you I want you to know it's a consistent theme in scripture in Ezekiel 37 the prophet has a vision it's a valley of dry bones and it's the breath of God the Holy Spirit that gives life to the dry bones and to the dead bodies. In a conversation that Jesus is having with a guy called Nicodemus in John 3, verses 5 to 7, Jesus says this, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Nicodemus was Israel's teacher in the law, but he was absolutely clueless when it came to salvation in Christ and rebirth through the Holy Spirit. The biblical word, okay, for going from death to life is regeneration. So we say that together, regeneration. And this is something the Holy Spirit is desiring to do in our lives as we partner with him from glory to glory, from strength to strength. In Titus verses three, four, uh, verses four to seven, he says this: "But when the goodness and the loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy." And here's the key words: "By the washing and regeneration of the renewal of the Holy Spirit." when he poured it out richly on us through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, so that being justified by his grace, we might become his according to the hope of eternal life. As followers of Jesus, there was a moment for all of us when we went from being spiritually dead to spiritually alive. For some of us, it was an exact day. It was a time. For others of us, it's that gradual process, isn't it? And then suddenly, wham, we encounter the Lord. For myself, it was a gradual process. At the age of 12, I encountered the Holy Spirit. I encountered Christ. And it changed my life forever. Changed my life forever. Paul is reminding us today in Galatians 5.25 that new life in the Spirit is just the beginning. It is not 
the entrance when we give our lives to Jesus. It's that process of regeneration. Jesus said to Nicodemus, the Spirit is always moving. And today, he is inviting all of us to join him. Galatians 5, 25, since we, let's say it, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The Greek word translated keep in step with the Spirit means to walk in cadence with the Spirit. It describes the kind of walking that is done in an ordered line. We're holding to a pattern while under the control of someone else. We see it in a military parade, don't we? If some of us attempt line dancing or Zumba classes, not me, but, but we hold to, we're following that person. We're trying to keep in step with them. The military parade, the band, they march down the street. Their boots are pounding the pavement. They're keeping in step. And this is the image that Paul is saying. Let us keep in step with the Spirit. It's a command. We need to know that. Keeping in step with the Spirit is a command. It's an imperative. It's possible to live by the Spirit, but today we can be out of step with the Spirit. It's not automatic. It's something we have to choose. It's something we have to obey. And I want to encourage us today, let's choose to partner with the Holy Spirit. And it's a partnership we are invited to enjoy. As I look back over my life, uh, over my lives, over my life, I've been blown away by this partnering with the Holy Spirit. You may ask the question today, well, what does it look like to live in partnership with the Holy Spirit when I'm in my nine to five job, when my boss is making life difficult for me? What does keeping in step with the Spirit look like when it seems like all I'm doing is changing dirty nappies or dealing with a difficult teenager? What does keeping in step with the Spirit look like when there is conflict in my marriage, when our hearts are longing for something more, when we are trying to do life in the ordinary moments? The first thing I want to suggest is this. When we partner with the Holy Spirit, we do it in His strength. It's in His strength. Coming back to that bigger conversation that Paul was having with the Galatian church, these guys, they had started out strong. They believed in Jesus. They experienced the power of the Holy Spirit. They were running the race well. They were keeping in step. But they started to become influenced and make unhealthy partnerships. They were allowing some religious people to affect their faith. They were trying to add works to their faith. They were moving away from living in the Holy Spirit strength and they were trying to do life in their own strength. It became legalistic. Uh, legalistic. It was boring. They got caught up in the idea that they could be good enough to earn God's approval by keeping a certain amount of rules. And friends, that is a load of rubbish. We are not going to keep in step with the Spirit by simply keeping some rules. It has to be more than that. They were rejecting Christ's saving work and they were adding stuff to their salvation. A little help from God and it was a load of effort on their part. That's not what faith in Jesus is about. Today I want to remind us that we have received the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit and it's all about him. It's all about our faith in Jesus. Today we don't have to try and run this race in our own strength. We do it in his strength. We do it in His strength. It's through the partnership with the Holy Spirit that we receive the strength to accomplish all that God has created us for, 
today in the house and at home. God has created us for a specific purpose. If God has called you to be a wife, he will give you the strength to do it. If he's called you to be a parent, he will give you the strength. An office worker, a team leader, a business leader, a faithful volunteer. God will give us the strength. Also, when he prompts us to share about Jesus, to love practically, to pray for others, we do it in his power, not ours. This week, Noah had uh, the end of season like football awards for his team. And there were just moments where I felt God prompting me to share faith. And even in that moment with some of the parents, I was telling Alison, it was just absolutely brilliant. God ordained moments to share. We do it in his strength. Also as well, we do it in his strength, but we have got to allow God to change us from the inside. He has to change us from the inside. The Holy Spirit of God is not withholding anything from us today. How amazing is that? He is wanting to make himself one with us. And today I want to remind us, we've sung about it, but the God of the heavens, the God of the earth, lives in us. He lives in us. And he is wanting to change us. And the Galatian church had lost sight of this. We read in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16, and we can read it together. It says, don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you. Fantastic. The Spirit of God lives in us. We read in John 14, 16, Jesus' words, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Wow. The Holy Spirit of God is with us forever. In order to dwell in us, God has not diluted his spirit. God hasn't divided his spirit and given us a fraction of it so that his presence can live in us. He has given us absolutely everything through Jesus. We read in scripture, we know through the old covenant that it was only the high priest that was allowed in to the Holy of Holies, where the presence of God dwelt. But it was when Christ came and when the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom through his crucifixion, that this new covenant enabled us to dwell with the Spirit of God in us. We are allowed to enter the Holy of Holies. We are in the Holy of Holies. How amazing is that? As children of God, his spirit lives in us. Not a diluted version, not a watered down version, but it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. We read in Romans 8 verse 11, and we can read it together. And if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. The Holy Spirit, he is wanting to teach you. He is wanting to guide you. He is wanting to reveal things to you today as we allow him to change us from the inside. Also, he changes us from the inside and that will happen when we spend time in his presence. We need to spend time in his presence. You may be new to faith today and think, well, what on earth does that look like? Spending time in God's presence is studying and meditating on his word. It is praying, it's worshiping, it is just being still in his presence and through the new covenant that Christ has made possible for us. We can do that, amen? amen? As we partner with the Holy Spirit, he is wanting to renew our minds. He is wanting to renew our minds. 
There is a lot of rubbish that is thrown at our lives, at our minds. And God is wanting to renew our thinking. And this comes when we meditate on God's word. I want to encourage us today, let's allow God's word to saturate our lives. If God has given you a promise that you are holding on to today, I want to encourage you, allow that promise to saturate your life. Keep coming back to that promise. Keep coming back to that promise. There are promises that I am laying hold of God for, and I will lay hold of them in the morning and in the evening. And I want to encourage you to do the same. Paul reminds us in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, he says this, all scripture is God-breathed. When we come to a Bible, when we come to the Word, it's the living Word. Each day, as we spend time in His presence reading scripture, the Holy Spirit is wanting to communicate with us, and He will never tell us anything that contradicts the Bible. He will always give us truth. The Spirit of God today is wanting to lead you in truth. If we do not read the Bible, if we do not spend time in the Bible, we are limiting the moments that we have to hear from God. The Word of God is His vocabulary. Each day, God has a verse that He is wanting to speak into your life and into your situation. Also, when we come with prayer into his presence, again, I want to remind us that it is two-way communication. We just don't come with our shopping list and say, God, there we go, I'm off. It is a two-way conversation. When we spend time with God in his presence, we get to know him intimately, don't we? We get to hear his voice I cannot form a meaningful relationship with Alison unless I spend time with her. And it's the same with God. If we are not spending time with him, our relationship with him is bland, it's tasteless, it's boring. I want to encourage you today to spend time in his presence. Jesus himself, he made it so clear to us. He says that we can do nothing without him and we will bear no fruit unless we abide in him. Jesus said this in John 15, verse 5. Let's read it together. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The Galatian church forgot about this. They were trying to do life in their strength. In Ephesians 6, verse 18, let's read. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. When we spend time in His presence, we are renewing our minds, we're renewing our souls, and we are partnering with the Holy Spirit as we spend time in his presence, the Lord is wanting to speak to us. The Lord is wanting to speak to you. And I want to blow a myth out of the pond, out of the water. You may be here today, you may be a young Christian, and you may think, well, because of that, the Lord isn't going to speak to me. And that, again, is rubbish. God doesn't just speak to super Christians. He is wanting to speak to you in your situation and in your life. There are loads of promises in Scripture that clearly shows us that God is wanting to speak to us and make himself known to us as his children. In Jeremiah 33, verse 3, we hear this. It says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. When we spend time in his presence, the Lord is wanting to reveal things to you that you do not know. Wow, how amazing. 
It says in Isaiah 30, 21, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And the Lord is saying that to us, whatever we are facing, whatever you're going through, this is the way, walk in it. John 10, 27, Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. That comes when we listen to his voice. The Holy Spirit is wanting to speak to us through his word, but he will speak to us in other ways as well. And we need to have our ears open to hear his voice. He may illuminate a Bible verse to us, but he may also speak to us by dropping something into our hearts. Who have experienced that? Yeah. It's that inward voice, isn't it? Sometimes it's the sounding of an alarm where you think God is just speaking something here. And then there are other situations where he prompts us with his peace. And we know that the Lord is speaking. Alison and I came to the church as visitors in May 2017. We didn't know anything about the church, did we really? Then we'd come occasionally... But on that morning, we felt the Lord just say to us, individually, this is a church where we could settle. This is a church where we could do life. And then it was in like the October, the November, that out of the blue, Michael got in touch and just asked us about an opportunity to come and serve here. And the Lord will do that, won't he? He will drop things into our spirit where we know it's the Lord, where we know it's the Lord. I want to encourage you to spend time in his presence. Maybe put the phone away and listen. Listen for his voice. Jesus, our good shepherd, your good shepherd, is not wanting to hold anything back from us. Listen out for his voice. As I conclude... I just want to remind us today that God has given us his spirit. Let's live in partnership with him. Partnership with the Holy Spirit comes when we surrender totally to Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you daily to have these moments of surrender where we say, Jesus, we surrender afresh to you. Jesus, we embrace you. Let's live life in his strength. Let's allow God to change us from the inside. Spend time in his presence. Listen to his voice. Listen to his voice. Shall we pray? Let's take a moment and welcome the Holy Spirit. And where you are, just determine in your heart that you're going to partner with him. Whatever you may be going through, whatever you may be facing, just say, God, I come afresh to you and I will partner with you. I will partner with you. At home again, just speak that out in your living room, wherever you're watching from, that you will partner with the Holy Spirit. The amazing thing is that when we partner with the Holy Spirit, yes, we're in step with him, but we reflect his character and his nature in all situations. And friends, that is what God is calling us to as we partner with him, that we reflect him in the workplace, that we reflect him at home, that we reflect him in our streets, in our community, that people see Jesus in us. If this is all new to you, this kind of conversation about partnering with the Holy Spirit, it may be something that you've even given up on. I want to encourage you to take up this incredible partnership with the Spirit of God. 
in Colossians 1 verse 9 to 10, Paul is praying a prayer for the believers and it's a brilliant prayer. He says this, for this reason, since the day we have shared about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. And in this moment now, I pray that from the front to the back, at home, that you will know God filling your life. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. I pray that you will know the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you give life. We thank you that you give understanding. And in this moment, we receive from you. We receive from you. Today, Holy Spirit, we give you all access to our lives. I want to encourage you to do that for a moment. Just say, Lord, I am giving you access to all areas. Access to everything. No limits off, no pretending. Holy Spirit, have your way. Lord, illuminate those areas in our lives that we need to change. Come by your Spirit and have your way. Have your way. Spirit of the living God, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Here I am waiting. Abide in me, I pray. Here I am longing for you. Hide me. Oh, Jesus. 